all right hey friends i thought i would get on here and give you guys an update i haven't spoken to you in a very long time if you don't know we had a house fire so i'm taking you into the property where we are now living this is my mom and dad's old homestead uh, this is where i came from it's a 40 acre homestead and i apologize if the truck is loud this is the old work truck it's gonna be noisy <laughs> it's gonna be bumpy but hopefully you guys can get a idea of what this is like here uh, the land is actually very very similar to our property up in Missouri I'll show you a little sidescape here you can see that this is a very similar property to that where we will eventually be moving um, so I thought this would be a good place to kind of adjust and basically get in a good practice run to see how things are going to go up there but uh, this this property now belongs to my brother and he has been very gracious to let us stay here and I really I don't know what I would do without that man he is such a blessing but he he has definitely helped us so much but we're trying to stay here for a while and kind of adjust and this is kind of an in-between spot this is not permanent um, we won't be doing anything to the land here that is permanent unless it's something that will be better for my brother in the long run now right here there's a divide back there it is a gravel pit and when we come this way it goes on to the valley we actually live in the valley back here we are living in a gray wolf camper for now. This was the best option for us right now because uh, we're trying to save enough money to finally get moved and also be comfortable. So we're slowly working on things. I will say that dealing with the the house fire and the insurance obviously a house fire is not a pleasant thing but the insurance made it super unpleasant so yeah there is a little cabin right here I'm not gonna show you very much that's actually my brother's recreational cabin that he uses for just time away hunting and things like that um, we do have a couple of little things that are being cleaned up on the property um, there's a couple of metal piles where my brother at some point will probably haul that off and then um, there's a little bit of a mess around the camper at the moment because we are st still trying to sort what all right sorry about that guys my camera cut off so anyways what I was saying is here is the gray wolf camper and uh, we ran flawlessly on this for four months on solar. It did help that this camper comes with a small solar kit of its own to help keep the battery upcharged and it, it will run the refrigerator and stuff and lights um, in a downtime. So anyways, but we did go ahead and hook up to the grid temporarily because the solar kit we were actually using was our backup. We were building our solar kit and we ran out of time because of the house fire. So anyways, it is hot, it is summer, and that is a 15,000 BTU AC that's on the camper and it's a little much for our temporary system. Um, so we'll probably go back off grid completely this winter and uh i don't think we're gonna have any problems with that so anyways i'm gonna span over here our chicken coop is over there we are still working on building a fenced in area we do let them free range on most days uh, we have 12 chickens and we have six guinea so uh, i'll show those to you here in just a bit and then right over here we have our garden that is the metal pile 
miscellaneous pile. Um, a lot of things go there that we can reuse and repurpose. So we kind of put them there to try to figure out, you know, if we can possibly use it instead of it going to waste. So uh, anyway, I'll give you a tour of the garden in a few minutes. Back behind those two trees that you see there, we do have two springs. They are freshwater springs. And that is actually where we get all of our water from. There is a wet weather creek here and you see it's dry. It's been very dry here in Arkansas and it's extremely hot right now. And like I said, this is a 40 acre property, but we kind of stay in this little small area down here in the valley. That's the road that goes up and my brother's cabin up there. I'm trying to span. It's a gorgeous place. I totally understand why my parents loved it here and I did too I used to tromp, <laughs> tromp around those woods back there cannot believe I never got bitten by a snake here but once they moved closer to town I actually did get bitten by a copperhead that was a bad experience as, <laughs> as well <coughs> excuse me all right now the garden looks pretty rough right now uh like I said, it's very dry. All of the water that we water the garden with, we have to haul up here by hand from the springs back there. So it's, uh, it's a labor. Um, and I've got quite a bit of weeding I've got to get done soon. But we have been so busy lately. Uh, my husband works a full... 12 hour job every day and he actually works like an hour from here so that leaves me here to tend to the homestead so I'm doing as much as I can so I'm doing as much as I can with my physical capabilities so anyway we've got some beans here now yesterday this garden looks much better, but the sun was absolutely scorching yesterday, and we reached almost 100, and today we're actually supposed to be 102. So the plants did get quite a bit of sunburn, and they were really droopy yesterday afternoon. Uh, I was actually pretty worried about some stuff. But anyways, we've got just some pole beans here. We've got... Uh, different types of squash and pumpkins growing over there uh, this right here in this biggest part is a, I think it's sweet meat squash which is basically the same as a pumpkin it will store really well over winter and then we've got some Jaredel on the second row and I can't remember what the other pumpkin was but it is a true pumpkin um, we have some pole beans growing up our little makeshift shelf. This is something that actually came off the scrap pile <laughs> and I put it to use. And we have some lima beans growing right here. We still have several sets of seeds that haven't come up yet and they will pretty soon. And then we have lots of things that we do want to put down here in the garden. Once we get in here and clean all of the weeds out We'll figure out what we need to put in some of these bare spots. But I'll come over here and show you just one of these sweet meat squash that's growing. And there she is. They actually are supposed to be kind of, I think, blue. Um, the Jaredel is also blue. That's actually one of my favorites. I think, yeah, it's a pumpkin. And we have okra growing right here on this row and then we have another set of okra that's coming up here if you can see that I'm gonna say we grow a lot of rocks here as well it's very very rocky back here which is also more similar to our property in Missouri but the rocks are much larger there so, like I said, this is a good practice for us. 
Um, we just have some radish right here. And I am letting some of these go to seed because I want to harvest the seed pods off of them to eat. I have a little row of carrots. I do need to add a lot more carrot seeds on this row. That was actually, I didn't actually expect them to come up and they did. I was surprised. So we have some little fairy tale uh, eggplant here. And yes, we have, I think they're called flea beetles. Um, this is a completely organic garden and I normally would add things like diatomaceous earth and neem oil, but I'm going to be honest, we are just so behind right now on things. Hopefully I can eventually get out here and get things taken care of. Sorry if I'm moving the camera around a lot. We are also raising several mosquitoes around here apparently. Um, I'm under attack. So I'm trying to hurry up and get this shown to you guys. But anyway, uh, over here we have my favorite thing in the garden and this is brown cherries. I wish I had a whole row of these things. They are delicious. I love these things. And uh, anyway, they really looked bad yesterday after the heat. So I'm going to have to make sure I get some water out here to these guys this morning so that they can kind of be prepared for the day ahead. But uh, we have a row of tomatoes here. We've got several different heirloom varieties growing. I do need to come out here and tie things back up. Uh, the storm kind of made a mess out of these two. We have some of the regular garden variety tomatoes here that we picked up locally, but a lot of my tomato plants came from Azure Standard and uh, they're heirloom and organic. And we have a lot of gorgeous tomatoes on these. Let's see, these are the striped Romans. And it's odd, this is actually what they're supposed to look like, but we have some growing out here that are not typical of its type and they are just gargantuan. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it's almost as big as my hand. Then we have some little sugar mamas growing there. And that's just a little cherry. And this one I'm, I'm extremely excited about. These are the Tada tomatoes and they are huge. And uh, I have been watching these things like a hawk. We have had to battle the worms in here. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog barking. She's a great Pyrenees. That's what she does. She watches over the animals. So uh, anyway, we have two more striped Romans here. And this is another heirloom right here. And these, I, I believe, were... The black brandy ones. Yes, that's what they are. There you go. That should be a delicious tomato. I'm gonna have to get that one definitely tied up. I don't want them laying on the ground. I definitely don't want the branches breaking, so we have some insect pressure out here for sure. But uh, now we have our row of peppers. We have our Tabasco here. These guys are getting pretty tall. They're doing really well. And some of these I honestly don't even remember what they were when I planted them. That's obviously a top of bell. Another bell. I think this is supposed to be a red. And I can't remember what top. We have several bell tops, and we have a shishito here, and I'm sorry if this video is not very good quality, guys. Like I said, I'm trying to hurry up and get this done before the mosquitoes carry us off. 
and it is hot yeah. and I just picked all of these off yesterday I should have left them on for you guys to see but these are gorgeous little purple sweet peppers mm. I'll probably show you guys when I go back in the uh, camper just what they look like and there's another one I don't remember exactly what it was and this is supposed to be an orange bell then we have a big area here we're still working on we got it tilled once we've got to go back over it again and get all the rest of the weeds out get all that cleaned up uh, I haven't made up my mind what we're gonna fill in here we are gonna put down a large patch of kale so that probably is what's gonna go here we have our compost here and a volunteer <laughs> tomato plant that looks very healthy we have our cucumbers we have different tops in here this is the studio which is my favorite for fresh eating uh, this one right here is a pickling cucumber and then we have the really funky looking ones they are Armenian and they also taste pretty good. And then we have another pickling cucumber down here. I really do see... I hate seeing all these weeds in here. I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, it's a work in progress. And we don't have a lot of time. So this isn't one of those look at my perfect Gordon videos. I'm just showing you guys what we're doing here. And uh, trying to be more self-sufficient and grow as much as we can we have several rows here of uh, purple hole peas that is one of my favorite things to eat and then this area is getting taken over by grass right now but we've got to get this cleaned out and tilled up to where there's a big open spot because I have sweet potato slips that are almost ready to go in. And we have two big rows of potatoes here. They're starting to look a little rough. They looked absolutely gorgeous for several weeks, a couple of months. Uh, but they too are getting a little bit affected by this heat. These two rows right here are red potatoes and they're actually the red potatoes that I had left out of one of my azure hauls and I let them sprout and then we planted them uh -huh. and then we have purple potatoes here that also came from azure and I've got to say they did uh-huh they did extremely well so if you're wanting seed potatoes, I'm just going to say, get you some organic ones and let them sprout. They do pretty well for most, most people. There's still a nice pasture back here. There's some muscadine growing back there that I'm really hoping to harvest so we can make some muscadine jelly. Um, there's also some more growing over there close to the little road. Uh, there's several walnut trees on the property. I'm not sure if we're going to harvest those. We may. I'll go ahead and bring you back here to the springs. My brother's been working on this property still Whoa. with his tractor and getting it nice and cleaned up. No one's lived over here for a very long time. And, uh, she's coming back to life. And it's it's exciting. I, I do really love this place. A lot of good memories here. Yeah. I know the mosquitoes are so bad. Here are the two springs. This is the one that we typically use to water the garden. Uh, we also water the animals out of this one. And then this is the one that we get all of our drinking water and stuff hey. to shower. Yes, son. Come on. You're okay. We 
pump it out. My brother usually comes over here and helps us with that. Uh, the water cart, or it's a trailer with a IVC tote. He pulls it over here for us with his little ranger. Um, I'm hoping that he can get this to where I can actually pull it back here myself with the Yukon. But right now it's still a little bit too hard to get back here. But uh, if you guys are interested in seeing how we do all that, just let me know. I'll, I'll show you anything that you want to see. If you're curious, we have an old piece of farm equipment here. There's lots of stuff over here like this. Remnants of a past life. But, uh, also if you have any questions about the, the camper or the solar or anything like that, just let me know. I'd be glad to answer as much as I can or show you anything that I can. We are letting our gray water just run free. The septic is a little bit more difficult to deal with, but we are planning on remedying, remedying <laughs> that situation soon. We are actually planning on getting a biogas system that will completely um, reuse the waste and actually turn it into gas. So we have been planning on getting that for a couple of years now. We wanted to put it on our homestead up in Missouri, so we might as well just go ahead and get it now. Um, yeah, this looks horrible right here. This is a burn pile, and then any metal gets picked out. Um, there were some things that happened over here on this property when it was unattended. You know, people always trespass and do things that they shouldn't. Uh, there used to be a huge pole barn back there. Uh, that pasture that's back there is where the cows used to be when my mom and dad farmed over here. And the pole barn was close to the spring. And someone came over here trespassing and actually stayed in the pole barn. And honestly, I think they were probably using the spring water and making moonshine. I'm not sure, but whatever happened, they ended up catching the, the pole barn on fire and it burned out. So that's where all the tin is from and it's still getting cleaned up. It was a mess. Um, there actually used to be a little barn here as well. Uh, when we lived over here, when I was with my parents, uh, we had a house over there on the edge of that hill. I know you can't probably see it right now, it's shaded, but uh, the house was embedded in a hill. They actually had a few houses over here. There was an original log cabin that was probably at least 200 years old and it actually burned down and then they built another house over here and it also ended up being burnt. Uh, it was a tragic situation. My siblings are all older than I am and they were preparing to graduate. They had all of their senior rings and stuff like that. Back then it was hard to get money and they worked really hard and saved for this stuff and it was all lost. And they didn't have home insurance of course so it was a total loss. We have been nurturing as many of the medicinal plants around here as we can. We have some mullen. There's a really big one over here. And if I had extra time, there was so much uh, wild plantain growing everywhere, which is really good for making salves and you can even eat it. It's just a, a wonderful foraging plant. Now they're going to be noisy guys. This is temporary. This is what we had to throw up just to get 
them transferred out here and keep them safe. We wanted to see how bad it was going to be with the predators out here. And um, things have been going okay so far. We've not had any incidents at the moment so far with them free ranging. Uh, Luna does protect quite a bit. She's a good dog. Uh, I've got her chained up at the moment so I can actually get this done because she is a sucker for belly rubs and if I let her off while I was trying to do this video, she stops every few minutes in front of me and rolls over to <laughs> try to force me to rub her belly. So we've got her tied up just for now. Right, baby? You're a good girl. But anyways, um, obviously this is not what we want this to be like, but it, it's working for now and it's keeping everyone safe. We do want to build a much bigger chicken coop and uh, we have to make a winter enclosure for the guinea pretty soon. They're almost ready to be turned loose. I want them to be able to fully fly before I let them go. And uh, I want them to recognize this is a safe place to come, you know. Uh, we're, we're pretty much going to let them be completely free and do their own thing. And uh, we've raised them alongside the chickens, so hopefully they don't compete and fight. I've heard stories of chickens and guineas not getting along, so I wanted to ensure that they could be at least neighborly. So uh, anyway, we've got our big water tote there. Their water gets here the same way the garden. It gets loaded into the wheelbarrow and barreled over here. It is work. So yeah. Hi Luna. Luna Bear. She's a good girl. Yes, she is. Okay. The chickens love this area over here. I know there's ticks everywhere and they have been digging in there. As soon as they get out, that's where they go. But anyways, guys, I hope this wasn't too boring. Uh, I hope you got a good, at least pretty good view of what's going on with our life at the moment. Like I said, this is temporary. This is uh, good practice. We figured out a lot of things that we thought were going to work really well that <laughs> we needed to adjust them. So... I do know if I would have finished the solar setup that I was building, it would have worked completely, especially for what we were going to use it for on a tiny home. Um, my truck looks embarrassing right now. I got a nail at my tire, so now it's got that ugly one on there. And it actually went through the sidewall, so it ruined it. So we got to get a new tire put on there. Here's a simple solar setup in case you're curious. These are 200 watt panels. Uh, if you hook them up in parallel, they draw much more power than in a series, in case you didn't know that. I'll go ahead and show you. It's a mess in here, but this is our Blue Eddie. And uh, she has done us really well. And see, this is the camper's little system right here. Has a little bitty solar panel on top. It's only 50 watts, but you know it does what it needs to do. So anyway, and I'll just bring you guys back here. My brother's got a couple of apple trees here and there. And uh, there's deer out here, so he's got them protected. Like I said, please ignore the mess. We are still figuring out what we want to keep here and what we want to send on to storage. We've got our mower, another backup gas generator. Anytime you have any solar kit set, set up, I'm going to say you still need gas just in case. Uh, the water tank and we have our other dog here which also I have tied up at the moment that's blue he is our security guard 
Luna deals with the animals and he he deals with the bigger things. Right, buddy? You're a good boy too. But uh he also likes attention, so if I let him loose, he would be tripping me up. So anyways, this is what we do with our combustible garbage. Now if it's glass, plastic, or metal, stuff like that, it gets recycled. And by the way, I had some videos set up for you guys that I was working on. That, that's why this one's going to be a little long because I'm kind of jamming everything into one. Uh, I had several smaller videos that I was actually getting ready for you guys. And my phone made it into that guy. Uh, we were cleaning out the truck and I guess it fell off of the center console into a bag that we thought was trash. And yeah, it made it into there and we found the remnants of it. <laughs> At first I thought I might've left it somewhere or it got stolen, but yeah, it's, uh, it's no longer with us. So I had to buy another phone and like I said, dealing with the insurance and all that stuff, you know, money has been a major issue for us lately. So that took me a little bit, but anyway, we got a new one now and hopefully I can start making some videos for you guys. There's my son out running around playing <laughs> and he has been excellent out here. He is so happy and I just love seeing him grow and learn out here like he is so excited about the garden he's so smart uh i will have to show you guys someday make a little short video like he's learned all of the continents the countries the states um territories everything yeah, on the globe like yes you did but um he's learning to read he's just excelling out here like it's it's peaceful we can grow we can be in nature we can uh yes there's plantain i see it like he's he's definitely learning the plants too but uh we can actually be free here as free as you can be and enjoy life while we're here and learn as much as we can and hopefully be as self-sustainable as possible and yeah but that's it that's the old homestead i hope you guys like this video sorry if my talking's a little messed up we have lots of holes out here in this garden or yard not garden and it's a little hard to walk and look at a video and not trip <laughs> Thank God I did not fall on my face for this video. So, <laughs> All right, I forgot I was going to show you guys. We have our sweet potato slips growing here. These are also off of our um, Azure Standard sweet potatoes. All right, I forgot I was going to show you guys also the peppers. This is the little purple sweet pepper. And this is what the shishito looks like. It's a delicious pepper also. Um, got some plant food here. This is supposed to be one of the best organic plant foods. Uh, I'm going to try that out and let you guys know what I think about it. Also, if you ever wonder what a really good flashlight is, if you're basically out in the wilderness, these are good. And I also have another one I can recommend if you're curious. But anyways, all right, now I'm going to get off of here. If you want to watch a really good channel that is like awesome, just pure awesomeness off grid and totally homestead worthy uh check out flat tar homestead that's my favorite friend on here and uh anyway i'm jumping off of here have a good day all right bye friends